Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now today I'm excited to share how to use your Nuvo embellishment mousse and get a little bit more use out of it by creating your own colorful sprays. Now I stepped a little bit out of my comfort zone for this video since I don't usually work with lots of sprays, but it was super fun to get a little bit inky and create lots of different effects with them. So I'm going to be sharing four different card projects after we create the sprays in this video so you can get an idea on how to use them. So without further ado, let's turn down to my work surface and get started. Okay, so to create my sprays in, I'm using these Nuvo Light Mist spray bottles. Now these come in a pack of two, and the reason why I like them for colored mists like this is because they have that little handle on them. So instead of touching the nozzle all the time and having your hand on the same part where it where the spray comes out. You've got that extra nozzle so you won't get as messy. And also, it's got that lock on it. So if you're going and traveling with these or shaking them up, uh, you're not gonna have the spray spill all over, which is really nice. So I'm making it inside of this. So I'll bring in one of these spray bottles here. I'll take off the cap. And the color that I'm gonna use today is this nice orange color of the embellishment mousse. So this is orange blush. And this is a really nice saturated orange color. Now there's another color called Coral Calypso. And you can see the difference between these colors. This one has a lot more saturation in it. And although you might not love this color and you want more of this color, you're gonna wanna use this color if you're making a spray like this because it'll dilute the color. So you'll get more of a color like this anyway. So I'm using this dark orange, really saturated color to make the spray. And I'm going to just take a palette knife and I'm going to go right into the mousse and just pull, pull it apart a little bit, do some digging inside of there. So I'll take a couple scoops and put it inside of the spray. And although it seems like a lot, you really do get a lot of use out of this mousse. So you're really not wasting a ton of it because you can still use the rest of it on all your projects. So just digging a little bit of it out there. And it tends to stick to the palette knife a lot too. So you want to pull off more than you need because a lot of it will come back onto that palette knife. So I'll just place it inside there. Try to scoop it off. And I'll put about two to three scoops inside of there. And remember, you can always add more later. So I'll just go in with that. And like I said, a lot of it gets put back into the jar. So then I've got a little pitcher of water here and I'm just going to pour a little bit of water inside of this spray bottle. Now you don't want a ton. The more water you add, the more diluted the color will be. So let's say you're just using this for one, one or two projects and you don't want a ton of spray. You don't have to add a ton of water in. So I'm just filling it up, about up to there so it's not much of that bottle at all. But that'll make my color more vibrant and not make me have to use a ton of that mousse. So I'm going to screw on that cap there and I'll make sure this is locked so that it won't squirt anywhere as I'm shaking the bottle up. And you can see right now that this looks a little bit weird. The color isn't really mixed in there. So you do have to shake it quite a bit. So I'm going to swirl it from side to side to get all of that Nouveau Mousse incorporated with that water and it'll kind of disintegrate as you're shaking it. All right, so you know that it's ready once most of that color looks super incorporated in there and you've got a nice solid color of spray. So I'll pull in just a piece of watercolor cardstock here. I'll unlock that bottle and then you're gonna to wanna to pump the trigger a few times to get that color going. And look, you get that wonderful spray there. So you get that awesome colored of spray and that mousse really makes that nice saturated color, especially when you use darker colors to begin with. So if I wanted it even more vibrant than that, I can continue adding color, but I think I'm pretty happy with the look of this color. Okay, so I went ahead and created a rainbow assortment of colors here using that mousse. And now I'm going to dive in and share how to create some really fun projects using these sprays. Okay, so now we're switching over into the voiceover portion so I can finish off the video by sharing all the projects with you guys. So I also wanted to mention that in between your time of using these sprays, Sometimes the mousse settles to the bottom, so you just want to make sure to lock the bottle and give it a little bit of a shake before you start spraying. That way it'll mix all those pigments up and nothing will get clogged inside your bottle. So once I'm ready after I swirl around those colors then, I'll unlock the bottle and we can start our projects here. 
So for this first one, I'm not creating a project, but I just wanted to share a fun background. So I'll spray on my blue colored spray here, and then I'll move on in with my green spray as well, and I'll kind of fill in the whole background. I want to show how to get a little bit of texture here, so you just want to lay down a nice layer of colors before you do that. So I'm laying down some green spray there, and then to get that texture, I'm just using paper towel, and you can see that I set it down and just barely even touched it, and it left that fun texture inside of that spray. So then to make sure the texture stays, I use my heat tool to heat set it so it doesn't disappear. And look, you can use whatever paper towel you guys have with whatever patterns, and it creates a really fun texture in your project. Okay, so for the next card, I'm going to share how to really simply just spray through a stencil and get two different backgrounds and then finish it off really easily like this card here. So I'm going to go over top of this Thermo Web stencil with my red, orange, and yellow kind of gold sprays. And I'm just going to really lightly spray over top. You don't want to add too much spray so that it seeps underneath, but you want just enough so you can see that every area on your stencil is covered. And if it does seep underneath a little bit, that's kind of the fun of sprays, and I do like that look because it's a little bit more organic than ink blending. So I'm spraying all my colors on here, and then I can lift up my stencil off the surface. This is that big reveal, and you get that fun color onto there. So I'll set that off to the side and let that dry, and you can also get a second background just using that one stencil spray. So I'm going to take another piece of watercolor cardstock, and I'll flip my stencil and just drop it down with the side with lots of the spray that I had on there. So this way you get a reversed background, and you get to use that excess spray that you had on there, which is really fun. So now I'm going to go in and share how to finish off this background really simply with this hipster stamp set from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to do some stamping on top of this simple background. And also I'm going to bring in this awesome set from Neat and Tangled, and I'm going to use that little you are so to finish off that sentiment so that it says you are so legit. So I'm just using the travel stamp platform here because I wanted a really crisp image while I was stamping these down. So I'll center up that little gorilla in his fun little outfit there, and I'll stamp that onto a little bit higher than the center of the card. And I'm going to stamp it a couple different times. Now the second time I'm just applying ink to his glasses there, so you get a darker look on his glasses. And then I'll go back in on the whole image and just stamp it one more time. And that way you get that really nice dark image. And then I'm going to lift out that top acrylic plate there and turn it over to the clear stamp side so I can do my sentiment. So I'm going to stamp down that you are so, and then once again I'll flip it to the rubber side, and I'm going to use the legit sentiment then. So that completes the fun little sentiment on that card. And usually with these spray backgrounds, I like to keep it really simple. So here I just did black ink stamping, and that was really enough for this card, and I think it's a nice masculine card, and I really like how it turned out. And you can even see there that the Nouveau Mousse, wherever I sprayed it, creates that really fun kind of resist effect for that ink. So it didn't quite completely stamp on top of that, but I love the bold and graphic look that this card had once it was finished. Okay, so for the second card here, I'm going to be sharing how to spray a die cut and also get a second card with that sprayed background as well. So I'm using the Lily Spray die here from Tonic, and I've cut that out of a piece of watercolor cardstock and I'll adhere it onto a piece of watercolor cardstock as well. This way, as I'm spraying, I get that top spray with the flowers there, and I also get that fun background with that um, negative spray of the image there. So I'm just going to spray it enough, but not so that the spray seeps underneath the die cut. So then I'll lift off that little die cut there, and you've got that background sprayed and the image. So now that I'm done with that, I'll heat set both of those, so I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and dry, and then I can do a second layer. So I wasn't too fond of how that flower turned out, and I wanted to make it more vibrant, so I sprayed on that red there. I'm going to heat set that right in between layers as well, because red and green mix to make brown, so you want to make sure it's nice and dry before you go in with the second layer. And then I'll spray that brown over top in all those areas where the leaves are. So the spray creates a really fun organic look, so it's not like you just colored this in perfectly, it's got kind of those imperfections and the spray patterns in there which I really like. So I'll dab off some extra color if I don't love how it turned out, and then I'll move on to my background here. So this um, yellowish kind of color is actually an Indian gold color that I mixed. So when I spray it onto the surface here, it doesn't look like much when it's wet. However, when I dab it off a little bit and when it's completely dry here, it gives a really nice gold shimmer and shine that doesn't come off on your hands, which is super nice. 
So I'll heat set it with my heat tool here since I'm a little bit impatient and I'll blot off some of that color as well. And you can see that fun background as I tilt it on the camera. You get that really fun gold shine in there because that gold nouveau mousse. So now I'm going to add little tiny pieces of foam tape on the back of that lily spray dye. I know I'm a little bit crazy. And I'm going in with some collage medium as well to make sure that it has a really nice bond to that cardstock, even though everything's a little bit warped. So I'll add that around to the center of the cardstock there on that gold background. And then I'll press it down and I'll place an acrylic block on top for a little while as well to make sure that it's nice and stuck down onto that background there. Okay, so moving on into the sentiment here, I've stamped with a clear mark ink pad the Miss You Friends stamp from a little pretty pink posh set called Sea Friends. I always find myself coming back to this set when I need a little tiny sentiment like this one. So I'll heat emboss that with my heat tool here to make sure that it's not that nice crisp white image. And then I'm going to cut that out and adhere those into two little strips on my card here. So it creates that nice graphic look. Then to finish off this card, I thought it needed a little bit something more. So I'm taking some gold kind of champagne colored Nouveau drops and I'm going to add those onto the center of these flowers. So there's some places where the die cut kind of has areas for them. And then I also just added them kind of randomly to the center of the flowers. And this really adds that fun element to it and gives it a little bit of texture onto there to finish off this card. Okay, so here's a quick closer look at the card and I really love the organic look of this one. So that really fun look of all those sprays. So moving on into the next card here, this one is really kind of mixed media-ish kind of background here, but I really do like how it turned out. And again, this one I'm gonna share two different cards you can get with it, and I'll actually finish off both of them. So for this first card, I wanna create a fun background here. This is more of a mixed media background, so it's a little bit outside my comfort zone, but I had lots of fun creating it here. So I'm gonna add some red, yellow, or that gold kind of color, and the blue sprays into here. And then I'm getting that texture as well. So I'll bring in my little paper towel and blot off some of that color really lightly. And then in between all my layers, I'm drying it with a heat tool to make sure that everything doesn't run together. And then I get specific looks with all the different layers that I add onto there. So each layer will have its own impact. Then I'm bringing in a little tonic stencil here. And I'm going to just hold that right over top of it quickly and just give it a few sprays. That way you get that light pattern in that red color and then I can flip my stencil and just blot it off onto the background as well. This gives you lots of different texture and it builds up all those layers as well. I brought in another stencil here and just did some sprays of the blue ink as well here and then blotted it off to create that final layer on my card here. And then I'm going to dry it until it's completely dry and then we can move on to the next step. So here you can see that background nice and dry and it's got some of that shimmer from that gold color as well, which is really awesome. Okay, so for this next step, I'm using the Mariposa Wings die set, and I'm going to hang that off the side of my little background there that I created. I know it's kind of sad, we're cutting it all up, but it's gonna have a really cool look in the end. So whatever you do, once you're done die cutting this butterfly, is make sure that you keep all those tiny little pieces in there. So you see every tiny little area, make sure every piece is kept. So you can put all those pieces into a little bowl or just keep it inside your die or on your cutting plate to make sure that all those pieces aren't lost. And we're gonna put it together like a puzzle in the end. So I cut that die out of a black piece of cardstock as well. And then I'm using this giant roll of scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive. I'll share this more in a future video, but I love this stuff. This big piece I added onto my card base there and that gives you a full sticky, like super sticky background. So I'll link that down below as well. That stuff is super useful for all your card making. So I'm gonna take my background there that I had cut out. This is the negative portion. And I'm just going to add that onto my card base here. Being careful, because again, this is really strong adhesive. So make sure that you've got everything nice before you really press it down onto your card. Then I'm going to go in with that black piece of that butterfly that I had cut out. And this is that regular butterfly wings here. And I'm just going to fit that inside like a little puzzle piece there. And once everything is nice and down, I'll press that down really firm and make sure that it's nice and stuck. Now then we're going in with a little puzzle here and we're gonna fill in all those little tiny die cut pieces into all those little gaps on the card. So since this is all self-adhesive, it's pretty easy to do. Just turn on a TV show or some music and you can quickly get this all done. 
It's a little bit tedious to do, but I find that the quick sticks tool helps a lot with it, where you can pick up your little pieces and tilt them around and make sure they fit in really nicely. Okay, so once that's complete, here's how that background looks. And I really love the feel of this as well. If you could feel it in real life, it feels like one piece of cardstock. So that's the beauty of inlaying it like that, is it's not on top and it's more stunning than that. So then I did the Sending You Love Sentiment, and I layered a couple die cuts with gold glitter cardstock on top to finish that off, and that's from a Stampin' Cut Hero Art set. So here's a final look at that card there. I really love that background, and it's super stunning with that contrast of the butterfly there. Now, since we cut that butterfly out, you do have that positive portion of the butterfly there that's nice and colored like our background. So here I'm spraying down that gold yellowish color as well again and I'm going to heat set that background so you get that fun shiny gold color and I'll blot off any of that really harsh areas but you get that cool shine on there. So I added that to a card base and then I'll take my little butterfly and hang it off the side just like I did the other one there and I'll adhere that down with a nice strong liquid adhesive. So that was a really simple card compared to the other one but it still gives a really strong impact as well. So for this one, I used the Prayers Stampin' Cut set from Hero Arts, and I die cut that Prayer Sentiment several times and layered that all up, so that gives it a nice dimension. And then I used the Sending Hugs and Stamp, and I stamped that right over top on a little strip of cardstock to finish off that sentiment. So that finishes off that card really nicely, but I thought it needed a little something more, so you could totally leave it how it is right now, or you can go in and add sequins and things like that but I thought it just needed a little bit of shimmer. So I went in with this clear shimmer pen from Tonic just to finish it all off, and I think that really tied the whole card together. What'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed that video and learned a little bit more about how to get more use out of your Nuvo mousses by creating some colorful mists. Be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite from this video. And also, if you liked it, please give this video a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button down below. And if there's a little bell icon once you're subscribed next to it, if you click that as well, you can make sure to get all my notifications so you never miss another crafty video like this one from me. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see all of you for another crafting and card making video soon. Bye!